One of the things that I've learned in the process of, of hiring a lot of people over the years is do not rely on word of mouth. So initially when we were first starting out in my law firm, you know, I know a lot of lawyers, I would say, well, I'm looking for a junior associate, you know, somebody who's really smart and hardworking. Do you know anyone? And people would refer people and that's how we would hire. And that I think is really absolutely the wrong way to do it. Um, if you believe in diversity, as we do, if you think diversity is important, if you rely on word of mouth, most of us have friends who are similar to us. And so you're going to end up with people who are similar to you and you're not going to have diversity. Uh, and I think we all, I hope we all agree that diversity is really important. This is gonna be amazing. You got a lot of people on this call today. I think the biggest miss that people make in Thank terms of so selling it. And that's what a good marketing message, good it's branding about does. How does somebody do something big in a very short period of time? Without further ado, I am going to pass it over to someone with much more experience than me when it comes to hiring and finding the right team members. Lisa Bloom, thank you so much for taking time on the show. Well, thank you, Bill. Good morning. I love your energy. If we all had that energy in the morning, oh my God, what, what kind of a world would it be? So thank you so much for having me. The thing about hiring is you really have to think deeply about who you are and what your law firm is, what your business is, who you are now and where you want to go in the future. So when you're thinking about hiring, it really encompasses everything. And I get kind of philosophical and think deeply, right? Because I'm not just hiring a person to fill a space, to write some letters and to write some briefs and to handle some motions, you know, in the next couple of weeks and months, but I want to think long-term and think about who is exactly the kind of person that I want to have for the job. Um, one of the things that I've learned in the process of, of hiring a lot of people over the years is do not rely on word of mouth. So initially when we were first starting out in my law firm, you know, I know a lot of lawyers, I would say, well, I'm looking for a junior associate, you know, somebody who's really smart and hardworking. Do you know anyone? And people would refer people and that's how we would hire. And that I think is really absolutely the wrong way to do it. Um, if you believe in diversity, as we do, if you think diversity is important, if you rely on word of mouth, most of us have friends who are similar to us. And so you're going to end up with people who are similar to you and you're not going to have diversity. Uh, and I think we all, I hope we all agree that diversity is really important. So we don't rely on word of mouth anymore. We put out ads on Indeed and Craigslist and other sites uh, where lawyers are looking for jobs. And we try to cast a very, very wide net. Uh, what I have learned is when we say, well, we're looking for a junior attorney uh, with one or two years experience, along comes somebody with six years of experience, but actually this guy is so great that we can't pass him up and we hire him. And one of, the, uh, one of the greatest attorneys in my firm right now is somebody we hired years ago who was completely wrong for the job description that we were looking for, but we liked him so much. We thought we wanna, we wanna try this guy out. And he's been with the firm, I think now for seven years and, and we love him. So cast a wide net, keep an open mind. And when great talent comes along, I say swoop them up because you may not have that opportunity again. And uh, you know, you'll know you find a place for somebody with, with great talent. Um, the other couple of things I wanted to say was the interview. The interview is obviously very important. Actually, before I get to the interview, I do a little trick, which is on the, the job ad, I say, please, you know, all the qualifications and the salary and everything that we're looking for. And then I say, please send your resume, writing sample, and one paragraph on why you are the ideal candidate for the job. Okay, three things. 95% of the candidates do not do those three things. They do one or two of the three things. So that group is out. I only look at the 5% who's actually capable of following the instruction for the three things, resume, writing sample, and one paragraph of why you are ideal for the job. You know, lawyers, we have to do a lot of writing. We have to do it succinctly and concisely. If you are not capable of writing one paragraph, uh, then this is not gonna be a good job for you, <laughs> right? So that weeds out the 95%. Of the 5% who actually follow those instructions, and who we otherwise like, 
we have the interview and the interview is extremely important. I have discovered that a lot of lawyers are very concerned about being nice in the interview and making friends and I already have friends, so I don't need to make friends in the job interview. I really want to get certain information. And I do that by asking a lot of open-ended questions. And then I'm quiet. Imagine a lawyer actually not talking the whole time and letting other people talk. I know, I know it's hard to imagine. And it's especially hard to imagine for me because I have a big mouth and I'm a big talker. But there are times when you have to zip it. And I think a job interview is one of those times. So Tell me about why you went to law school. Tell me about the practice that you've had so far. What have been the biggest challenges? What are your favorite accomplishments? Um, keep in mind that people are very different. Some people will really crow about their achievements and be very uh, proud of what they've done and put it all out there. Other people are more modest. So you have to take that into account. There are definitely gender differences. Women are far less likely, I think, to brag uh, just culturally, we're taught not to do that. So you really might have to take that into account. She might be a great candidate. She's just not going to be bragging. Guys, again, it's a gender difference, but guys do tend to brag a little bit. Is, is he really all that? Has he really done all those things? Is he embellishing? Uh, so you really have to dig into that. And then I always ask the question, why are you interested in my firm? And then I stop talking. OK, because some people they're, they're interviewing it, you know, 10 or 20 firms and they have the same canned speech. If they don't have a reason of why my firm, uh, then they really haven't done their homework. And if they haven't done their homework, they're not going to be a great lawyer in my law firm because you got to do your homework. That's part of being a lawyer. Uh, so I really want to hear about my law firm and what is it about my law firm that they're interested in? I wanna see that they've done their homework, that they know something about my law firm. It's not very difficult. We have a website, there's a million articles. We do a lot of high profile cases. Um, and, and then you wanna do a deep dive into their resume. You know, We all know that of course people do embellish on their resume. They're gonna leave things out that don't look good. I, you know, I don't need people to be perfect, but I need them to be honest. So if there's a gap on the resume, which there often is, ask about the gap. What were you doing there? Ask why they left their prior job. If they have a bunch of different jobs, are they a job jumper? And why have they had you know, three different jobs in two years? That's going to be a concern because we want a long-term relationship. We want people who are going to come to our firm. We're going to train them on how we do things and how we are successful. And if they're going to leave us after a year because they just like to flit around a bunch of different jobs, uh, that's going to be a problem. Obviously, anybody can quit anytime they want, uh, but that's not what we're looking for. So we put out there that we want a long-term relationship. I try to look them in the eye over the Zoom uh, during the pandemic. Of course, that's how we've done it and really get their answer about that. It's never going to be perfect. Uh, what I've learned is uh, you never really know until you hire somebody, until you try them out, until you get to work with them. Um, my husband, Braden, who runs the business end of my law firm, says you have to hire five people before you get the one good one. You have to go through a lot of people. I, I hope that number is too high because that is a very high number. Uh, I, you know, it breaks my heart when we have to let somebody go, but sometimes you do have to let people go and then you can hire again and bring in somebody who turned out to be really the ideal person for the job. And so you're glad that you did replace the person who wasn't working out. Uh, I guess the last thing I would say before questions is that, you know, not every person is the right fit for every job. I guess that's kind of obvious, but if you have a big heart and you care about people and you meet people and they seem nice and you want to give them a job, you know, you really have to think in um, very, a very practical business-like way about that job. And is this person the right person for the job? At our law firm, I can never give somebody a job out of charity. I've learned that the hard way. There was somebody years ago who we felt very sorry for. We gave the job to this person and she just was not capable of doing a good job. So I've learned that yes, give to charity, help people out. But at our firm, we, know we have big cases against the biggest law firms in the country, against big powerful entities. Everybody there has to be excellent. We don't have room for somebody who's just not really capable of doing the job. So I don't apologize for demanding excellence of everybody on my team. I think my clients deserve it. And if somebody is just not able to cut it, then it's not gonna work out for them 
at our firm. Um, so that's what we're really looking for ultimately in the hiring process is people who can do the job with excellence and are gonna be a good fit with our firm culture. Okay, so that's my opening spiel. What do you got for me? Yeah, tons, tons of questions. So let's okay. let's do it popcorn style because um, you, have, you have a lot of wisdom when it comes to this. How many employees do you have right now, by the way, just so everyone has context? I think we have, uh, I wanna say 22. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, so we have 21 right now. So, so we're, we're kind of, we're in a similar, uh, you know, place right now when it comes to the size of the team. So, so it's, it's good to know that from a place of context, because a lot of our listeners have less than 20, you know, even less than five. Right. Sure. Um, so I'll give you some, some, some rapid questions here. Um, okay. And you, you way more experienced than me at this. So um, I want to, I want to ask you first, um, should you hire someone before you're ready for them or after you're ready? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, it, it's tough. If you have, you know, listen, I started out, it was just me, solo practitioner. And then I had an assistant and then I had an associate and, you know, we built it up. And it is hard because you think, well, we're not really bringing in enough money to hire someone. So you have to have a good sense of the trajectory. If your firm is doing well financially, I would say hire before you are ready and get that person. You know, it takes time to train people, uh, get them up to speed. So I would say before you're ready, but not a lot before, maybe just a little bit before. Okay. And I, I don't necessarily fo always follow that advice, I will admit. So, okay, good. I'm just going to keep rolling if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so hire someone before you're ready if you have the finances for it. I would completely agree with that. Um, because the job description is most rapidly created when you hire someone, you're like, oh crap, how do I manage them? How do I tell them what to do? So that level of urgency makes a job description spill out a lot faster. So, um, let me ask you the next question, which is, uh, potential versus skill. So existing skills versus potential. If you mm -hmm. could only choose one, which would you choose? I would choose existing skills because, I, you know, I, I'm not a law professor. I'm a practicing lawyer. I need people who can jump into the mix right now. So you need to have certain basic skills, you know, good writing, good speaking, advocacy, ability to research. You don't have to know everything, but you do have to have the basic skills. 